Hey everyone, this is Destiny, and this is going to be a short video of common questions that we get about Quality Matters, along with answers to those questions. So let's get started. First question is, what is Quality Matters? So QM was developed back in 2003 with the goal to improve online course quality. Maryland Online wanted to be able to measure and guarantee that online courses were of the highest quality regardless of where it was developed or where it was taught. Initially, it was funded by a grant, and at the end of the three years, they had trained over 690 peer reviewers in 28 different states. Since then, it has become a self-sustaining program. Um, it has become nationally recognized and has been adopted by uh, more than 1,300 colleges. So Quality Matters has developed um, standards for course design. These eight general standards address things like um, course overview, learning objectives, navigation, um, activities, all kinds of different things. And these standards are backed by years of research um, for best practices and effective online teaching strategies. So they didn't just make all of these standards up for the fun of it. Um, all of these are, are research-based standards. The next question is, why does ECU participate? Or really, um, the bigger question, why do I have to do this? So the state authorization reciprocity agreement requires us to provide students with quality online courses that can be taken by students across state lines, not just here in Oklahoma. Um, ECU has adopted Quality Matters in order to ensure that our courses are top notch so that we can be in compliance with that SARA agreement. Um, the biggest form of participation as of right now among East Central is um, faculty who teach online putting courses through Quality Matters internal course reviews. Our long-term goal for this is to have all online courses reviewed using QM standards. We're not there yet, um, but we are chipping away one course at a time in order to reach that long-term goal. Next question. What is an internal review? What we call an internal review is a term actually used by Quality Matters for reviews that are managed internally by the university's um, QM coordinators, which is Wendy and myself. So these reviews are unofficial, meaning they are not QM certified and not eligible for QM recognition. For these types of reviews, the internal review reviews that we do, we hire at least one reviewer that is external to the university. This is where a lot of people get confused because we call it an internal review, but we're hiring external reviewers. But just remember that internal review is a quality matters term. This type of re review can be structured any way that the university um, chooses. For us here at East Central, we follow the same steps as an official review, which would be eligible for QM recognition if we were to do that. So why do we do internal, internal reviews instead of the official reviews? The reason for this um, is cost. So the price of doing an official review, which is managed by Quality Matters instead of internally by East Central, the cost is very high. So instead, we are managing the reviews ourselves in order to save money. We will begin doing QM certified official reviews soon, but we have not started this process yet, so I will not go over what that looks like right now. One thing that we say a lot during the process whenever you're going through an internal review is that you will get a MET. So what does that mean? Getting your MET means your course meets all of the three point essential standards that are outlined in that standard rubric, as well as getting a minimum of 84 out of the 99 possible points. Basically, it means you pass. We don't like to use this term because there is no fail. When you go through the process, you will be given the opportunity to make changes in areas that do not necessarily meet right now. So even if you don't receive your MET during the initial review process, you will receive it at some point. It may just require a little extra work. So next, what does the internal review process look like? What do you actually have to do during that process? So there are a lot of steps, but we are here to walk you through each one. 
Before you even get to the intern review process, there's a couple of trainings that you need to complete. First, you must complete CEDL's online training for faculty course. The second thing is to complete QM training. This can be IYOC, which stands for Improving Your Online Course, or you can complete APPQMR, Applying the Quality Matters Rubric. There are other trainings that are available, um, and if you take those, um, you will need to make sure that they are approved by CEDL before uh, you just assume that they um, will count as your QM training. So just check with us first. Um, you'll also be asked to develop and submit a course map um, for one of the online courses that you teach. And we do not expect you to know how to do this all by yourself. We provide examples and we have templates on our CEDL pages. Plus, we provide training and schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings each semester to help you get started. We are here for you to utilize us as resources, and we're here to help. So make sure that you uh, set up meetings with us, because that's what we're here for. We will also put your course into a development shell inside of Blackboard. Um, and this shell has no students in it, and it will allow you to move things around, edit, design your course without the fear of disrupting your students. Once your course map and development shell are ready, we'll ask you to complete a self-review in which you go through the Quality Matter standards one by one and make sure you've included everything necessary to get your MET. At this point, you are all ready to go. You will complete some paperwork in the Quality Matters website. Wendy or myself will search for your review team. Um, everyone will meet during a pre-review conference call and then the review begins. The review team will consist of three reviewers who will be enrolled in your course as students. Um, and they'll be in that development shell, not your live course, but your development shell. The initial review lasts about three to four weeks, um, depending on everyone's schedules. The reviewers will look at your syllabus, your objectives, and all of your content, activities, um, everything. At the end of the initial review, they will submit their decision along with some recommendations, and they will provide recommendations whether you meet the standards the first time through or you do not meet, um, because there's always something that you can improve upon um, in your shell, in your course. So at the end of that initial review process, they will submit their decision whether the course is met or unmet. Um, if you meet the standards, you will fill out a response form and you're finished. If it does not meet standards, that is okay, and this happens um, quite often, so don't panic if, if that happens to you. The course at this point will go into what is called the amendment phase. This is when you have the opportunity to make changes based on their recommendations. You have 14 weeks during this time to work with us, to work with the master reviewer of the review team um, in order to make those changes and submit your amendment form. At this time, you should receive your MET and you're all done. Another question that we get quite often um, after the review is finished is about recertification. How long do I have before I have to put this course through all of this again? Once your course is QM reviewed, you have five years before it must be re-reviewed. However, if you make substantial changes to the course, you may be required to recertify the course at an earlier date. Substantial, as defined by Quality Matters, is 20%. So if you change 20% of your course, then you may need to recertify. This does not mean that you cannot make any changes whatsoever. It just means that you need to ensure that the changes do not affect the integrity of the course. This is about course design, not course delivery. If you make changes, just let us know. We can take a look. Um, for you to see if the course needs to be re recertified or if it's fine the way it is. The recertification process, well, let me go back here. The recertification process is not um, quite as grueling as the initial review. We'll hire only one reviewer during that um, who will look at the changes you've made and determine whether it still meets QM standards. Once approved, the course is valid for an additional three years. At this point in time, East Central has not had any courses go through this recertification process, but we will begin doing this within the next couple of years. Uh, we just haven't been doing it long enough to have courses reach that point in time yet. 
You can find the full recertification policy under our CEDL pages, um, under the Quality Matters tab. Um, the direct link is that uh, link that's posted on this slide here. Um, that covers all of the most basic questions. If you have any others that were not answered here or do not appear on our facts page, um, please email me or give me a call. I'd be happy to meet with you. Thanks.